Page 17, The Minstrel Song. On page 16, they're introducing you to a D minor scale. Hopefully you've been doing my scale videos on the different key signatures of the pieces in the book. C major, F major maybe, G major, I don't know. Well, we've got to do the minors. D minor is a relative minor to F major. F major has one flat. Well, D minor has one flat. That's the minor key with the same key signature. That's why it's relative to it. So I would have probably time to do my scale video on D minor. Learn the scale. I do the harmonic minor because they there's three different kinds of minors if you remember. And I simply it's the it's the minor is the same as the major. It's got one flat. Harmonic minor simply takes the seventh step, takes it up and sharpens it it's here. Here. It's a harmonic minor. It's what I cover in the video. I encourage you to learn that. Then that they have the chord progressions for the primary chords at the bottom of the page. The one chord, the four chord, five seven chord. You probably need to know those two. Mm -hmm. Eventually at least. But it helps because you'll see them in music and when you're already familiar with it, it makes playing the music that much easier. To, especially if you're sight reading it. Let's talk about minstrel song. Three, four time, one flat. It's in the key of D minor. I just so now you got when you look at a piece to decide what key it's in, you gotta keep in mind is it major or minor, you know, as to what it's in. Look at the end of it here. It, that usually ends on its main note, the one chord. And it's a D minor. I'm going to start with the right hand. Thumb on D. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Two, three, one. End of a phrase, lift up. So you want a little more silence between the D's than normal. So the half note D will be cut a little short. And two. And the, this dotted rhythm. One and two and. One and two and. This is the second measure, second line. The E's on beat one. The dot is on two. See the dot behind the quarter note? The eighth note comes on the end of two. One and two and. And then the other quarter notes on three. One and two and three. It's a dotted rhythm. You get it again at the bottom here. Just keep it one and two and. So you're here, and then lift up the end of the, this is the end of the second line. You have a rest, and you need to move up. So you're just moving up to here. Third line, second measure. The A is on second, and then fourth finger. We just changed hand positions. This is another way we do this in piano. It's used a lot. You need to get to where you can do it without looking at the keyboard. Eventually, you have to look at first. There. But something to think about is eventually get to where you can feel that change without looking. And then going on, that the dotted or the quarter note D is now second. It's between phrase. You're gonna lift up. And then that D at the end is held off forever and you'll get that okay. Left hand has these still these broken chords, what we've been doing. You've got the one chord and the four chord. If you have really big hands and really fat fingers and they don't fit up here, you can do that with 5-3-2. Otherwise, I encourage you to use the fingering in the book. Second line, it's here, and then come down to the C chord and then back up. And again, you need to be able to feel this eventually without looking at the keyboard. So you can go here, here, and here without looking. You can go up and down one key and feel your way there. So something to work on is practice that without looking at the keyboard to feel it. And then at the third line, you're here. Now watch this third measure. Cross over to the here. You just just cross over to the B flat, and then during the rest, you come back down here. Because when you crossed over, you in effect changed hand positions. Yeah. And then at the last line, and then you. So once you can play the hands 
separately okay then try putting them together because it goes on you can't hesitate if you've got any hesitations anywhere you need to work on those spots to get rid of the hesitation third line that's a tricky one here watch out right there see it changed both hands moves change positions at that spot because this went to here and this went to here the dynamics medium soft or moderately soft at the beginning that's the melody that's the right hand well the first note in the left hand that's also melody the melody has a pickup and the left hand is playing it so the left hand for one note has to be as loud as the melody and then it has to immediately come down to soft can you do that let's play that one out and these soft so that's, that's the melody, that's what we want to hear. Like so, I played it too loud. The point is the melody is above the bottom part. So if I play, how, how loud is moderately soft to you? Figure that out first. figured out then you make the rest of it softer and then at the end of the second line you go up a little bit to moderately loud that's the melody keep the left hand soft and then in the third line down and toward the end you come back down to the medium soft down At the bottom, the last four measures, you have a dim E writ. Diminuendo and retardando. Get softer and gradually slow down. So figure it out. Now the right hand, when you play that, that's going to gradually get softer on its own. It just does it. So make the left hand follow it as best you can. How light how soft can you play that left hand because we want to hear that D throughout the whole thing all this time the left hand is doing this I want to hear the D so and I'm not playing the D loud it's just soft sort of soft and I'm slowing down so it's just and at the end after the when you're done counting there, mm -hmm, then you lift up, like so. Now, they've added pedal. For some reason, Bastion likes to put pedal at the end of the pieces. I disagree with that. I think that's a bad idea. If you want to put the pedal, use the pedal, you go right ahead. I prefer the piece without pedal because this pedal will change the sound. Here, the last line would be this way with pedal. overtones you actually expand the sound well what you want to do is the sound we want the sound to lessen not expand so it's like it's opposite what it should be so I personally disagree with pedal I'm gonna leave it out on the video and if you want to use pedal it's up to you push the notes down and then the pedal and leave the pedal down until you at the end the pedal and the hands all come up at once if I were your teacher in front of me I would scribble that out don't use pedal on this piece you will notice they put the chord symbols at the top or above the staff at the different measures telling you like the DM is D minor and later you get a GM for G minor the chords. They're giving you the names of these chords if you have a guitar player or some 
somebody who can read these and improvise on these chords, they can play along with you. That can be a lot of fun too. I like to do a play with me, slowly, to double check the notes and the rhythms, not doing the dynamics. I will do the phrasing in the right hand, that's important. Now I'll give us two counts, because we come in on beat three. Now let's try it together. Ready, go. Three, tie, two, off. 